It's good to see everybody. Let's stand tonight on this wet, chilly January. But you know what? It could be a blizzard, but it's not. Praise God. Thankful for the weather so far. It's been cool, man. And January's almost half over. Well, let's uh, open up in a word of prayer. Just ask the Lord to be with us tonight. Father, we're grateful today for your blessings upon our lives. Lord, we have so much to be thankful for. And, and uh, we ask now, Lord, that as a music ministry is out and ministering in Clyde, Father, just uh, use them tremendously for your glory. And the ranger leaders and girls ministry leaders, Father, just uh, pour into their lives as well tonight as they pour into the lives of our children. As we've gathered together in here, Lord, and uh, may our worship be in spirit and truth as we learn Sunday night. And, and also, Lord, that you would be glorified in all that is said and done. We give you all the praise for it. We thank you once again in Christ's name. Amen. Let's just quickly welcome each other to the house of the Lord tonight. Greet each other with a smile on your face.
Just join our hearts in prayer tonight. Father, we're, we're thankful for your holiness. Lord, because of your holiness, your character, you never change. The same yesterday, today, and forever. And Lord, we can count on you. When we can count on no one else, we can always count on you to be the same. And Lord, that your word never changes. So Lord, we don't have to catch up with something new. We don't have to look and search for something different. When we have you, we have everything. So we thank you, Lord, for your holiness. And therefore, Lord, you are worthy of our praise and worthy of our worship. And Lord, we lift up those within the body who are not feeling well and may have other needs within their lives. Lord, we ask that you just minister healing to them. We pray for uh, but Barb, who's uh, had a cold, we pray for Lisa Latte, who's not feeling well. We pray for Virgie Blevins tonight and her family, Lord, that you'd minister to them. Thank you, Lord, that uh, she knows you. We pray, Lord, for Jean Morton's family, that, that, that they're lost. And we pray, Lord, just continue to comfort them. We pray, Lord, for Judy and Tom as they travel to Florida tomorrow, that you'd keep your hand upon them as they travel. And, Lord, just give them a great time of refreshing. We thank you for them. And, and, Lord, as we look into your word tonight, just bless us. And, Father, increase our knowledge. And, Father, may we be found faithful in your sight. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Now, you may be seated tonight. I have a couple ushers that prepare to take up our offering. A few announcements. Tomorrow morning, ladies' Bible study. Saturday at... 11 o'clock is a memorial service here at the church for Gene Morton. And following that is a luncheon here at the church. And so, ladies, we would need your help with that. And um, I guess see Jamie. Huh? Are they seeing you? Okay, see Jamie with that. Uh, Friday night, young adults are going to walleye hockey game. I think that's is that already sold out. The ho is there any, free, any tickets left? Three. Three tickets. Okay. We'll auction them off. All right. We're going to start School of the Bible in, uh, on Monday nights. So this coming Monday night will be our first night, just an orientation. If you're interested in just taking some Bible courses, whether they're for credit or just for the, the, your own knowledge, you can get college credit or however, 
uh, that would be up to you, but we would be starting that next week. Just an orientation if you're interested. Also, membership. Uh, membership class starts Tuesday night at our house, my wife's house and mine. And uh, at 7 o'clock, just time of fellowship. And then we have two more meetings after that. So if you're interested in membership, see Laura. Where's Laura? See me? Laura, I thought I saw her somewhere. We'll get you a membership card. It's not too late. And um, we have a few of these left. The, the series that I preached on back in October and November, uh, The Kingdom of Heaven is Like. There's eight CDs in here of those messages taken from Matthew chapter 13. So every one of the parables are in here. And uh, just a, a, some, even though I say so myself, some good teaching. I know I learned a lot. So hopefully if you want to give it as a gift to somebody, don't tell them how much you paid for it. It's free. All right. Also, then, we have some fasting cards. In the back table, uh, we have a, a basket or some container to put these in. If you fill them out, don't, don't put your name on it. We'll get into that tonight in our teaching why. But uh, there's also some handouts. There's three handouts on that table you can get after, after service as well. I made 50 copies, but we might have more than 50 people here tonight. But fill these out and... Uh, this one's already partially filled out. Wow, okay. Glad they didn't put a name on it. All right. So that's, uh, we're going to we begin this season of fasting on, on January 21st, and uh, we'll cover that a little bit more, too. Ushers, if you'd come. Dick, you want to mention the, the the 18th of February too? Well, we got some men here tonight, huh? Should we do that? Should be a good idea. Go ahead. Women are always doing things. It's time we do something. The women are always having all the fun. And taking our wallets and doing it, too. Okay. That's right. Okay. So we'll grab a quick bite to eat first. And okay. <laughs> all right. So it'll be a good time. And then the first weekend in March also is a men's, men's gathering in Columbus. So uh, praise the Lord. All right. Thank you. Go ahead and ask the Lord just to bless her, our giving tonight. Amen. Lord bless you as you give tonight. Take your Bibles and turn to the book of, his, of, of, uh, of, of uh, Genesis, Eticus, Exodus, Leviticus. I almost said Ezekiel. I knew that wasn't right. Leviticus chapter 23. We're going to look at several portions of Scripture. And uh, we're going to study fasting. One interesting thing about fasting is it, is it can be uh, controversial. And... Uh, one of the main reasons is because it's not really, uh, you look through the Bible, it's not really taught that much, but we'll get into that. So, defining fasting. <clears throat> it's 
So since we have embarked on, on this journey of fasting, um, the excitement has, has been building in the lives of people, as has a realization that uh, it's not going to be an easy road. And, and when you fast and seek the Lord in this manner, you, what you do is you put the spirit world on notice. You're serious about your, your walk with the Lord. And, and probably one of the main reasons I believe the Lord has led us to this season is to focus us back on Him above all else. Whether you fast or not, but, but I would encourage you to pray. You know, if you feel you don't want to fast or can't or don't want to, it, it's not a big issue. We'll get to that a little bit later, but at least pray. We're focusing on the Lord. And so this, this will be a season of time that I believe will be, become a, a date stamp, so to speak, in our lives and the history of the church. And we will be able to look back at this time and, and say, you know, that changed me. And uh, we've become a changed people. And as your pastor, I realize the responsibility to lead you correctly and biblically in all that we do, and that includes fasting. And so... I am going to follow this scripturally, not as, uh, as some would, man would, would insert into that, or man's thinking, or opinions, or whatever. We're going, to, we're going to look at it biblically. If I give you my opinion, I will tell you it's my opinion. And you can check that out the window if you want. That's up to you. But um, there are various opinions on this topic. So it's best for us to, obviously, it's always best to stick to the Word of God, wouldn't you say? <laughs> Let's stick to the Word of God. And use what he has to say as our guide in everything that we do. Now, I've had several people already speak to me about the meaning of fasting. What is it? How do you fast? What do you fast from? How often? And so forth. And as I sort of mentioned, man has put his own twist on a lot of these types of questions. But actually, I'm really not interested in man's twist. You may... Who was it? Chubby Checker that did the twist? Still got a little bit up here. So I'm interested in what God has to say about it. So let's first look at the Old Testament. Then we're going to look at the New Testament. And in time allowing, we will then look at um, five main principles of fasting. And uh, we also, we're going to look at types of fast tonight. And... Um, the Lord willing. Leviticus 23, 27. So I'm not doing all the talking. If someone would want to read that verse, the 27th verse of Leviticus 23. Okay, and it goes on further in that chapter to talk about the Day of Atonement. What was the Day of Atonement? Okay, and they, they did the sacrifice, right? The big set, the sacrifice in, in the temple. Uh, how often did that happen a year? Once. Okay, so that was the day of fasting for the year for the, for the Jewish people. Okay, he says something interesting in verse 27, he, again, he says it again in verse 32. He says, you shall afflict your souls. That sounds like fun. What is afflicting your soul? Okay. In Hebrew, it means, and it goes along with my cat's say, humbling yourself. You will humble, afflicting yourself, I am going to humble myself deeply before God inwardly by sorrow, by, by, by judging or judgment, and, and, and actually loathe yourself, and outwardly by fasting and abstinence from, from all carnal comforts and delights. That's what afflicting your soul means. Fasting, outwardly, yeah, and and. Abstinence from carnal comforts. This is actually the only fast that Moses joined into. It's the one that God ordained. Uh, Jews did fast at other times for 
periods of 24 hours. That would be from sundown to sundown. And so, since the time of Moses, examples of fasting have been common. After Israel was defeated by Ai, which, would you say that was a shock to them? <laughs> they, were, they, were, they were the, wow. But you know, God does, allows that to happen to us when we get prideful. And so they were defeated, and, and Joshua and the leaders, but word tells us, lay on their face. They laid on their face before God for, until evening, which is about 12 hours. Oh, and you think I preach long. 12 hours. 12 hours and laid on their face before the Lord. Judges chapter 20, verse 26, we won't read that tonight, but that speaks of fasting. 1 Samuel 7 and 2 Samuel 12 also gives us examples. Let's go to the book of Exodus, chapter 34. Verses 1 through 9, the Lord said to Moses, cut two tablets of stone like the first ones, and I'm going to write on these tablets the words that were on the first tablets which you broke. So be ready in the morning and come up in the morning to Mount Sinai and present yourself to me there on the top of the mountain. Sounds sounds to me like God's calling him into his office. (laughs) Okay, Moses, you can have a meeting in my office. And no man shall come up with you. Let no man be seen throughout all the mountain. Let neither flocks nor herds feed before that mountain. So he cut two tablets of stone like the first ones. Went, rose up early in the morning, went up to Mount Sinai as the Lord commanded him, took in his hand the two tablets. The Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him there. Oh, that had to be awesome. Proclaim and proclaim the name of the Lord. The Lord passed before him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abounding in goodness and truth. Now there's a scripture verse we need to memorize. Exodus 34, 6. The Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, don't forget who he is, long-suffering, abounding in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands of Forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, by no means clearing the guilty, visiting the inequity of the fathers upon the children, the children's children to the third and fourth generation. So Moses made haste and bowed his head toward the earth and worshipped. Then he said, If now I have found grace in your sight, O Lord, let my Lord, I pray, go among us, even though we are a stiff-necked people. Pardon our iniquity and our sin and take us your inheritance, as your inheritance. I want to go to verse 28. The reason I read that was just to let you know that God was with Moses. So he was there with the Lord. How many days? How many nights? He neither did what? Forty days, forty nights, ate no bread, drank how much water? No water. And and the Lord wrote on the tablets the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. Now, how long did Moses fast? What did he fast from? Everything. Okay. That's a supernatural fast. He's probably the only one on the face of the earth that's ever done it. He he fasted. He he, he was hungry. I think he drank during his fast. We'll get to that a little bit later. He fasted 40 days from food and water. and, And some believe that everyone should fast 40 days. I do not believe that. My opinion. And uh, I would never request that anyone do that. Uh, they use this illustration as an example, and, but in proper biblical interpretation, you have to take everything surrounding this situation in Moses' life. And uh, this, this incident, you have to consider that Moses was in the very presence of who? God. Talking with God. And if, if, if we were in that situation... We could go without food and water for 40 days. It probably seemed like a half an hour to Moses. You know, uh, That's a totally different environment. We are told that God appeared to him. We're, the glory of God was there, and, and Moses was caught up into the glory of God. He could, go, he could well go without food and water, because who was his sustenance at that point? God was. Okay. However, we know that nobody can go without water very long, right? Well, three, three days or so. Three, some have gone longer, but three or four days. And you just can't do it unless it's a supernatural condition. There are testimonies of this happening in various services. As a matter of fact, there was one 
uh, early 1900s over in Shawnee, Ohio. Um, I forget the lady who's doing the, the revival in the tent. She, she, actually, she spoke. The tent would hold 20,000 people, and she spoke without a PA system. That's a miracle in itself. But there was one lady in, that, in those services that was slain in the spirit for eight days. She laid there eight days, eight days, eight nights, and didn't eat or drink anything. She came up preaching. But, um, so it does happen on occasion, but not very often. Okay, some say Elijah fasted 40 days. However, we do know that God sent his angels to uh, feed him. He, he, would, he had run from Jezebel, right? And he climbed underneath a juniper tree and asked God to do what? Take my life. Take my life. Now, we, uh, we know that hey, if he really wanted to die, if he had just stayed where he was, Jezebel would have taken care of that for him. So the Lord did not take his life. But he did begin providing for his health, and he ministered to him as the angels fed him for, for 40 days. It, it, was a, it was a fast from a normal diet, but he still ate, uh, we could say, angels' food. Okay, the, Lord, the angels fed him. Uh, the only other person to fast 40 days was Jesus. And so we read of that in the Gospels, specifically Matthew 4, where it tells us that afterwards Jesus was hungry. It doesn't tell us that he was thirsty. And uh, so we, we, we assume then... The assumption that he probably drank some water. Okay, he may not have, but he may have. So he was led of the Spirit, was he not? In, into the... For what reason? To be tempted of the devil. Okay. So we have... Let's go to Esther 4. I'm not, we'll get to the New Testament in just a minute. But Esther chapter 4. Another fast. Esther 4, 15 and 16. Esther, where are you? Esther 4. If you get there, go ahead and read it. 15 and 16. Esther told them the reply to Mordecai, Go, gather all the Jews who are present in Shushan, fast for, and fast for me. Neither eat nor drink for three days, night and day. My maids and I will fast likewise. So how long did they fast? What did they fast from? Everything. Everything. Okay. Daniel chapter 1, verse 12. And we'll move over into the book of Acts. Daniel 1.12. This is a very popular portion of Scripture. Daniel tells them they, they want to feed him from the king's table. And he says, please test your servants for ten days. Let them give us vegetables. I think probably beans was more like it. To eat and water to drink. Okay. Or lentils. We'll call it lentils. Let us just, let us just eat that. Um, we'll get into that type of fast a little bit later. Acts chapter 9, verse 9. If you get that, go ahead and read it. Okay, so Paul was how many days? What, what did he fast from? Everything, okay. And, and that, that's your two examples. Three days, no food or water. And then you have Moses, 40 days, no food and water. And Jesus, 40 days. We don't read anywhere in the New Testament where Jesus instituted any kind of a fast. In other words, it did not become a church ordinance. And he never, he never, he actually never commanded that we fast. And Paul fasted, and uh, but he never, in, in all the writings to the church, he never taught the church how to fast, nor did he tell the church to do so. But let's look at a couple of things that Jesus said about fasting: Luke chapter five and Matthew chapter six. Luke 5, 33 through 35. 
They said to him, Why do the disciples of John fast often and make prayers, and likewise those of the Pharisees, but yours eat and drink? He said, Can you make the friends of the bridegroom fast while the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come when the bridegroom will be taken away from them. Then they will fast in those days. Okay. Meaning when the Lord is ascended, then uh, what? The church will fast. Okay, let's go to, uh, it's pretty cut, clear. Matthew 6. Sermon on the Mount, verses 16, 17, and 18. Moreover, this is, this is probably the most important teaching on fasting, these three scripture verses. Okay. Moreover, when you fast, do not be like the hypocrites with a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces, that they may appear to men to be fasting. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. But will you, when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face, so that you do not appear to men to be fasting, but to your Father who is in the secret place, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. So as I said, this is probably the most important verse on fasting in the New Testament. So we should not talk about how long we personally as individuals are fasting, or actually even encourage others to fast for a long time. It's, that's not what it's about. And I want to make sure that we, we understand that. Jesus warns about this as being what? Hypocritical. And, and actually prideful as well. Now there will be times, and, and this is the first time I know of, when the Lord will lead a pastor of a church to have the church spend a season in prayer and fasting. But always, it is always voluntarily done so. It's not mandated. It can't be mandated because who must lead you to fast? The Lord has to lead you. I can't lead you to fast. And uh, I, I can encourage you this time, but it's up to the Lord. Those who fast, another thing, those who fast are never, ever more spiritual than those who don't or can't. Never. It's not, it's not a measure of, of spirituality because fasting then becomes what? It becomes works, doesn't it? It can become works. And we'd be, wow, look how good I am. And the Lord is, is, is cutting through that stuff. Um, fasting can become a stumbling block. Fasting can become prideful. And for that very reason, I believe Jesus did not prescribe a certain fast, nor did the Holy Spirit put it into the Word of God as a teaching. And so, um, we're never to brag about fasting. Never brag about it. And, uh, matter of fact, that's between you and the Lord. That's why there's no names on those cards. Um, that's just more of a, a faith pledge on your part, and also so I know what days are covered in these 40 days. But other than that, I would hope that we continue to fast as the Lord leads us, uh, as individuals. But no one needs to know that. And so we're never to brag about fasting. And really, we're never to never start asking others to join us in a fast. And when we, hey, would you join me in a fast? You are borderline being a hypocrite. That's what Jesus is saying here. And uh, it's just stated in Matthew 6. It's never, it's never a good thing to go around bragging about how much we pray or how much we fast. Jesus said, don't appear unto others to fast. Which means what? Don't tell them. Yeah, it's, it's between you and the Lord. Don't let them know it. Do it unto who? The unto the Lord. Do it unto the Lord. Let's go to Acts chapter 10. <clears throat> Acts chapter 10, verse 30. So Cornelius said, Four days ago I was fasting, and until this hour. So how long did he fast? Four days. At the ninth hour I prayed in my house, and behold, a man stood before me in bright clothing. So there we have fasting in the New Testament. Uh, Acts chapter 14, verse 23. Acts 13 as well talks about fasting, uh, the first few verses. Acts 14, 23. So when they had appointed elders in, in every church and prayed with what? Fasting. 
They commended them to the Lord in whom they had believed. So it's good for people to fast. It's good for people to miss a meal. God forbid. It's good to fast before special services. Um, as the Lord leads you. But it doesn't mean that the disciples went on a long fast here. Now some of them in the New Testament uh, church kept the traditions of the Jewish religion, including fasting. And uh, there was only one, one fast required, and that was on the day of what? Atonement. Okay. Let's go to Acts 27. Interesting portion of Scripture on fasting. And then we're going to get into the foundation, five foundations of fasting. Acts 27, verse 9 and verse 35. And this is um, the, the voyage to Rome with Paul when the ship wrecks. Now when much time had been spent and sailing was now dangerous because the fast was already over, Paul advised them, saying, Men, I perceive that this voyage will end with disaster and much loss, not only of the cargo and ship, but also our lives. Now we also know that the angel came to him and said nobody's going to lose their life. Let's skip to verse 35. And when he had said these things, he took bread and gave thanks to God in the presence of them all. And when he had broken it, he began to eat. Uh, there is another verse in there. And I don't have it marked down. But uh, he, he talks about, you, you, you've gone, I think, about 14 days without eating. You need to eat for your health. Okay? He talks about that. So it's interesting that Paul gave these guys food after 14 days. <laughs> So you guys need to eat. Okay. Now, I'm going back to a 40-day fast. Any fast has to be led of the Holy Spirit. And I, uh, a pastor friend of mine almost died after a 40-day fast. A very, very, uh, he, he, was, uh, he, he was right at the edge of death. And there are some pastors who have died after a 40-day fast. And uh, for that reason, I would never encourage anybody to do a 40-day fast. Three days, max, you know. And uh, you have to really be led of the Spirit. Be led of the Spirit. Don't get caught into this fasting trap. There's a lot of it going on. And I'm not belittling fasting, but leading in this next section, the se section tonight, we must always have a purpose for fasting. I'm not one to jump on fads. And can fasting become a fad? I believe it has become a fad. Um, and, and we're not doing it for that reason. We must fast for a purpose. It always has a purpose. Now the main purpose is that we minister to the Lord at the time of fasting. Um... There's, there's something, you ever have something that just grinds at you? Okay. There's something that grinds at me doing about fasting. <laughs> I'll just share it. Um, I guess because I can. But you hear that, the, 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 I guess I, because I'm kind of in a, in a, in a, in a I have a lot of pastor friends and so forth. So I know what some churches are doing, and they, they go on these Daniel fasts, and and they start sharing recipes, and here, here, what recipe do you have? Where, you know, they're going all over for recipes on this Daniel fast, and I'm thinking, ah, that's not what it's about. It's about ministering to the Lord. That's the purpose of a fast. I know I shared this once before, the kid at Bible college who went and bought the ice cream cone, and after he bought the sardines, oh, I forgot I was fasting. Well, if you would fast and pray, you wouldn't forget that you were fasting. Right? So if you're going to fast a meal, what should you be doing? Praying. Praying. Not looking for recipes. Okay. Don't fast to get something. Fa pr pr fast and pray to take time to visit with the Lord. And that's what he has led us to do. And, and these messages of, of getting reinstituting and reestablishing because there is a lot to do in this city to reach the lost. And before we can be effective in doing that, all of us have really got to be in line with the Lord. 
We get in line with the Lord, and, and that's what the fasting is going to do. Maybe it'll take one meal for you to get in line with the Lord. Maybe it'll take 40 days. I don't know. But whatever the Lord leads you, and that's the purpose of it. Another reason to fast is to put the flesh under. How many knows the flesh needs to go under? Okay. Like you baptize somebody in water, and you know, certain ones say, yeah, I'll hold you down a few minutes. We need to hold that flesh down for a long time. And fasting will do that. Remember, hasn't the victory already been won? Didn't Jesus already win it all? Every demon has already been defeated. I don't fast to defeat demons. James says, resist the devil and he will do what? That's already victorious. I don't have to fast to make that happen. So fasting is our preparation to be used. And more importantly, that we become sensitive to the voice of the Holy Spirit. So all victory over everything is already won in the name of Jesus Christ. And as a believer, you have a right to use his name. Aren't you glad? You don't have to fast before you use his name. Okay, so let's get into the principles of fasting. There are five of them. Number one, I should have gave Dwayne these notes. I should have also said bring a notebook. But number one is this. Every believer should fast. I believe Jesus expected us to do that. As I already mentioned, Israel fasted. Jesus fasted. John's disciples fasted. Paul fasted, just to name a few, of the early church. Uh, right after the, all the church leaders had passed away of the early church, the church leaders right after the apostles, Clement of Rome, uh, Barnabas as well, another one, Hermas, Polycarp, Arrhenius, Eusebius, and Tertullian, all referred in their writings to fasting as a part of the Christian experience. Martin Luther, John Knox, Jonathan Edwards, John Wesley, Charles Finney, Andrew Murray, Charles Spurgeon, among others, fasted at very time, various times in their lives. Also examples of a Pente or early Pentecostal days of 1900 where, where people fasted. In the Azusa Street Revival, they were fasting. So should believers fast today? Yes. We need to fast. How often? As the Lord leads you. As the Lord leads you. Jesus expected us to partake of the, this discipline. That's what it is. It's a discipline. John Wesley, on the other hand, <laughs> I believe he took it a bit far. I, I love that guy. But he believed it was a sin not to fast. Just as it would be wrong for a Christian to never pray. It's reported that this is what John Wesley said. One who never fasts will no more enter heaven than one who never prays. I don't believe we can go that far. There's no scriptural evidence for that. No basis of that in scripture. But he is stating the importance of fasting. And saying that. And so... Um, if you don't fast, it doesn't mean you're not saved. That it, nothing to do with it. Because fasting is, would become works. So, but fasting, it's, it's a vital part of our experience. That's number one. Every believer should fast. Right. It does a body good. Okay. Number two. Fasting is... Not eating. Okay. The word used in the Bible for, for a fast or fasting comes from the Greek word, uh, and I'm not good at pronouncing Greek words, but nestia or nesteia or nesteu. It's a compound word. The first part is N-E, and that's a negative prefix. The second part is estheo, meaning to eat. And so the word fast, therefore, is a negative of eating, meaning if you're going to fast, you don't eat. Bummer. I was going to fast for my Xbox. So simply put, fasting is doing without food voluntarily for spiritual purposes. So it's doing without food. Fasting involves relinquishing of our desire for physical nourishment and comfort 
to express our desire for more of the Lord. Fasting. Um, the fall of man occurred over what? Eating. What it? The lust of the, the eyes. Looking at that fruit that I cannot eat. And it's the best looking fruit in the garden. Tell you, if there's one thing you don't want your children to do, tell them they can't do it. And then they'll, make, they'll find a way to do it. Okay. It's just mankind. So, so it started then with eating food. And the redemption of man, or the ministry of Christ, started with what? Abstaining from food. So fasting has to deal with food. There is no scriptural foundation to fast from anything other than food. It's nowhere in the Bible where well, they didn't have Xbox. No, but they had camel races. They could have fasted from camel races. Right? Okay. So, so if you feel the need to fast from something other than food in your life, you are most likely needing to quit it. Quit that thing. Because obviously, it's a hindrance to your life. Amen. Amen. Well, that one agrees with me. That's myself. <laughs> okay, people have fasted from a lot of different things. And it's usually things that they enjoy, so they consider it what? A sacrifice. Man, I really, I really enjoy whatever. And so it's a sacrifice to fast from it. Uh, you know, that may be pleasing to the Lord that you've fasted from whatever but it can never be considered a fast because fasting is doing without food. Now, if you want to abstain from your iPod for a while, abstain from it and pray, but it's not a fast. All right? It's not a fast. So you can't call it a biblical fast. How many would say that food plays a vital role in our lives? It sure does. How many have eaten today? So eating is basic to our humanity, right? So, ladies, you can answer this question. What is the way to a man's heart? Through his stomach. Hallelujah! I love it. That's why I married a good cook. So you fast from food. When you fast from food, you will find out very quick how addicted you are to eating. The Bible tells us not to be a what? Glutton. You know what? You may just have to fast, take, take a meal and not eat so much. Go to a buffet and just take one plate. Let's see how addicted you are to eating. Okay. So the withdrawal from, from fasting is, is both physical and it is emotional. We usually eat because we, we want to. Or it's 12, or it's 5, or I enjoy eating. <laughs> Anybody else enjoy eating? <laughs> so, when we give up uh, food to seek the Lord, what we are doing, we are, are releasing something that is critical to our very survival. Isn't food critical to your survival? Okay. Believe it or not, and, and don't take it outside of this room that I said this. All right? You can live forever without your cell phone. You can. And you can live forever without your chocolate. <laughs> blasphemy, that is. That's blasphemy. 
Right? Can you, can you live forever without chocolate? <laughs> it's hard in my house, but you can do it. You can live forever without your iPad and your iPod. You can live forever without football or you're going to, play, going to hockey, watch hockey. Without hockey. We can live forever without those things, but we cannot live forever without food. Right? Can't. So fasting those things really means, doesn't mean a whole lot. I can, whew, I, it's hard to live without a cell phone, but I sure would love to do it. So fasting properly, fasting God's way, what it does is it opens the door to God by unlocking this intimate chamber within us of this need and desire to eat. And as we sacrifice that which we enjoy so much and that which is basic to our survival, food, then we move into a dependence upon God which then allows him to invade our hearts with his supernatural provision. Fasting, if you've never done it, is an awesome experience if you fast from food. Fasting from that other stuff, you know, you know, Lord bless you, but it doesn't, it's not real fasting. And so, I believe it's probably more true than we realize that a way to a man's heart is through his stomach. The way to our spiritual heart is through our stomach. That's the second one. So fasting is not eating. I fast from food. Uh, spiritual fasting, number three, must be done God's way. There are several simple examples in the Bible on how we should fast, and the most notable I already mentioned about the Sermon on the Mount. And that teaching, as, as we mentioned, Jesus dealt with the confidentiality of our fasting. And Jesus assumes here that we will fast, and he encourages us to, to do it unto who? Unto him, and not unto men. So he discussed the motives of our fasting and he discouraged fasting uh, he did, from, from ever being uh, rewarded publicly. In other words, it's totally private. Now, in the Old Testament, fasting was accompanied with, with great outward signs of mourning, grieving. They put on what? Sackcloth, which is a camel's hair, that kind of stuff. And ashes, right? Uh, you can read that in Daniel 9.3. He did that. Joel 1.13, they did that. Sackcloth was a sign of, of mourning for the dead or a sign of a personal loss that you had. But it was also a sign of repentance. It was also the cheapest garment to buy. <laughs> That's what it was. Now, in Jesus' day, he recognized that fasting had become more of a public display rather than a private devotion, right? That's what he's talking about in the Sermon on the Mount here. Um, you can, you can consider fasting, really, you can consider fasting equivalent to your prayer closet. I hope you don't call somebody up on the phone or email them or text them and say, hey, I'm going to go into my prayer closet now. You know, if someone asks, hey, will you pray for me? Say, yeah, I'll go do that right now. That's fine. But when you start bragging about going into the prayer closet, so when I start bragging about, hey, will you fast for me for 41 days? Are you kidding me? I don't want anything to do with that. I'll fast when the Lord leads me to fast. Now, the other thing is, if, if someone comes to you privately and they have a need in their life, and this has happened actually to my wife, and they, they said, would you fast for three days? The Lord prompted me to ask you to fast for th three days with me, but nobody else knows about it. That's a different thing, okay? But when you get up and testify, I've been, I've been fasting for five days, who wants to join me? I think I'm moving away from you. Okay, it, it's, it, the, the motive is just totally twisted. And then the Lord speaks against that. Okay, so man appeared to be humble with a sackcloth and ashes and, re, and repented, but Jesus said nothing had changed on the inside. So Jesus reversed his emphasis to the inner life, encouraging man to wear sackcloth and ashes on the inside for God to see. Humble yourself. 
So the pure, this purifying of the purpose for fasting is important for us as we participate in this discipline. So we have to fast with the right motive. Right? Fast with the right motive. Now, there's a handout in the back on, on, the, uh, on, uh, on the table. It talks about different kinds of fasts. And uh, I'm going to give seven fasts, seven different types of fasts. The normal fast, which is a water fast, and it's the most typical in both biblical and Christian history, which includes drinking only water with no food or other drinks. Acts 13, Ezra 8. And by using only water, you, you are able to go several days without any nutrition. The body is cleansed. The body is going to be weakened. It's probably the best type of fast to pursue, uh, especially you know, three days or so forth. That's the normal fast, or the water fast. The second one is an absolute fast, or it's an emergency fast. That's what Esther did. That's what Paul did. No food, no liquid. Esther did it for three days. Paul did it for three days. And uh, you have to be careful. You, you, could, you could hurt yourself with this. So I, I, I would only do that. It's, it's, out, it's out of a, a desperate situation. Okay. For example, your pastor just got arrested. <laughs> fast. All right, no. Um, it, it's, a des- it's a desperate situation. Um, everybody go out and party. Now, don't do that. That could actually hurt my feelings. <laughs> but if you happen to go out and party, try to sneak some into the jail. Okay, so it's an emergency, emergency fast. fast. Man, God, God will lead, lead you to do something, do something like, like that. that. Man, man will not. not. Then your third one is an extended, extended fast, fast. And that's usually that's beyond, beyond 10 days. days. It includes, it includes water, water and other liquids, liquids such as natural, natural juices, juices. Okay, which yeah, you don't, you don't, you don't eat natural, natural juices and water. water. Um, um, as, as I said, said it's believed believe believe that Jesus actually just poured in water. Number four, Number four is a supernatural, is a supernatural fast, fast, which, which uh, uh, actually tried to hold the water and never participated in that. And I don't think he fasted because he wanted to. I think he just he didn't need anything. Our state, Lord, uh, the fifth, the fifth one, is one is a Jewish only fast. fast. Uh, uh, personally, personally, I believe, I believe that the Jewish Jews Jews are, are proper, proper fasts. Fast. Fast. Six, Six types of fasts: fast, fast, partial fast, 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 Daniel fast, 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 Okay. okay, I told you I told you that was my opinion. That's more of a diet than a fast. Um, Jesus, Jesus didn't eat anything. He 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 didn't eat I have no problem. I have no problem, <laughs> have no problem, have no problem doing, doing that. that. I just, I, just, I have I a hard time calling it a Daniel fast. I would prefer calling it a Daniel diet. But, but, but you really, really still eat. Yeah. Uh, then you have the restricted fast, 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 I, 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 I don't really recommend, recommend one person over three days. And that's and that's sheets of that. Last one, I suppose, is the, the, the fifth, fifth foundation, foundation for fasting, for fasting for the principle is that, is that fasting, fasting should always include prayer. It's prayer, it's prayer and fasting. fasting. So a biblical so fast, fast has in mind the spiritual, spiritual goal. goal. Of joy, of joy closer, closer to God. God. And connecting, and connecting with, him, with Him, I believe, I believe on a higher, higher level than where we connected, we connected with Him before. And that's, and that's where it will, it will lead, lead us. us. So, by, so combining by combining prayer, prayer with fasting, fasting we, are we are then able to stay centered, centered on the purpose of the sacrifice. Of the sacrifice. Consistent, Consistent prayer, prayer during a during season of fasting allows God, God the opportunity to, to guide your prayers, prayers to work in your life to reveal Scripture to you, you want to know how to memorize scripture better? Pray. pray. And when you go, you go, 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 go to the altar, 
pray on Sunday night, 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 whatever. Bring your Bring Bible. Bible. Read, Read the scripture. scripture. And, uh, and the Lord, Lord, Lord is more into, into he, he, was, he was speaking to you first. Some, 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 some great event. You're going, you're going to experience some of your greatest moments of revelation. Closest time, time to the Lord, Lord, Lord the cleansing, cleansing and energy, energy level, level actually, actually it's an extended, extended pass. After, after, after about three days, day, your energy level actually, actually picked up. up. Well, some, some people do this to take time, time and bless themselves. I believe we need to take the time to bless God. God. We need to do it for you. You're going, you're, going you're going to experience more answering prayer. You're going to experience, you're going to experience, more, experience more listening to prayer. The Lord will always be able to listen more when we pray. And, 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 and so, so you've you got to find, find it difficult to pray, to pray at times. Time. And so it's so good to have a list of things to pray for, including uh, if you want a list of all, the, of all the church members and adherents, those who attend, if we have an up-to-date, see Laura and she gets your list and pray. Wouldn't it be neat to know that from January 21st to February 29th that you're being prayed for every day by somebody in this church? Huh? Yes? I think so. I think it'd be great. I hope we are anyways, but you get a list and, 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 and pray that way. Also, I have two more handouts in the back. They're called prayer tracks. and it's just I used one Friday night uh, just to, to guide you in prayer. And it give you, shows you how to pray and so forth. Uh, and if you want to maximize your fasting, you must pray. You must pray. Uh, <clears throat> Billy Wilson, the International Minister of Outreach for the Church of God of Prophecy in Cleveland, Tennessee, gives us, gave me, got those examples from him uh, back there. So prayer is essential in, in making your time of fasting effectual. So pray regularly and... Uh, Pray fervently. Pray with understanding and pray how? In the Spirit. Pray when prompted by the Lord. I'll tell you what, your prayers will tra travel farther than you think they could have ever traveled and more powerful than you ever dreamed when you begin to, to, to do this. So you don't have to be smart to realize the potential that's released when you practice these disciplines. And that's basically what it is. It's a discipline. And uh, the Lord is preparing us for something great. And also it's going to be a challenge. And also, as I mentioned Sunday morning, the devil is going to rear his ugly head. And so we need to be prepared for that. But we don't have to worry about it because greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. And so uh, also he'll reveal sin in our lives. Isn't that a good thing? The good thing. And so, uh, there we have it. We'll look at uh, some other things on fast. We'll continue on next week. Yes, Brenda. Number four. Number four. <laughs> Number four. Embarrass <laughs> me in front of the whole church. I think I need to go pray and fast about this. Okay, number four is the different types of fast. I'm sorry, I never did mention what number four was. It is the types of fast. It's, a, it's on the handout in the back. I knew that. <laughs> After I read it, it reminded myself. Number five is pray. Pray and fast. So. I may have um, thrown some of your beliefs in the creek or whatever you want to call it you know, you know, your theology may be messed up tonight or whatever but so be it you can handle it try to give it straight from the word and not man's ideas of it so. okay let's stand unless anybody has any questions I want, I want, if anybody has any questions you can still stand anybody have any questions don't ask me what number four is <laughs> All right. Well, praise the Lord. It's going to be an exciting time for the church. Again, there's some prayer card or some fast, fasting and prayer cards in the back. Take one, pray over it, and just and, and, and fast and pray as the Lord leads and, and directs you. And He may not lead to direct lead and direct you to fast at all. But uh, maybe it's just praying, and that's fine. That prayer is powerful, and so it's, uh, and it's 
So that's included as well. Well, let's pray. Anton, would you close our time of prayer tonight? Amen. Lord bless you. Have a great rest of the night and the rest of the week if you're able to come to the memorial service Saturday. Also, there's three tickets left for the hockey game.